Ho-ho-ho! Welcome everyone to another episode of the Mere Mortals Meanderings, Philosophy in the Park, Deep Conversations with a Light-Hearted Touch. You have Kyron, Mickey Mouse, on this side. And you've got Juan, the man in the hood with the swaggy sea lion, in the other side of the mic. Wearing his cool glasses, and I'm Mickey Mouse because I've got my Mickey Mouse... Uh, beanie on. Uh, beanie on. Now, a meandering session is where we typically... We'll just uh, talk about some random topics that we've both come across during the week, and uh, I'm just going to dive straight into my first one. Brendan mm. of uh, Brendan Jo, who's been on the podcast three times, four times, I four believe. times, yeah, yeah, a uh, fair few times. Okay. My, my good handstand buddy. Uh, he actually made a recent observation that we don't actually talk about philosophy much anymore, and uh, mm. I, was, I was I was going. You're right. I think it's been a, a, a fairly long time. You know, not super long. It's not like six months, but probably no. been like a solid month or two where we've we've just been focusing on other things. You know, value for value, yeah, cryptocurrencies, uh, your trip away, and stuff like that. So mm. there was a lot of a lot of things. Music. So there's a lot of things that um, we we were t- chatting about and didn't get into. I suppose might what you might call the heart of our podcast, which is more. The mere mortals, you know, we're more, we're just mere mortals. So mm. It's just sort of like two guys trying to get through like everyday life, coming across bullshit things. You know, we try to do our best in mm. whatever endeavors that we are. We're not not fucking around, but also, you know, uh, we we struggle as well. And mm. so um, here's a little. I wanted to get back to the heart of that, which I think was um, uh, uh, and and. Uh, Adding to this point is, I'm wondering if one of the reasons I've, with me personally, have mm. sort of gone away is uh, I've been reading maybe too many standard philosophy books and they have left me underwhelmed, yeah, to say the least. I have be. not been impressed with the what I've taken away from the philosophy books I've read. So, mm-hmm. just to recap, that would be things like. Uh, I'm currently reading Reasons and Persons by Derek Parfit. I'll, I'll do a book review on that and give some more on that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I previ- previously read uh, uh, Beyond Good and Evil by, by Nish. I'd read uh, The Question Concerning Technology, Heidegger. Uh, there, was, there was a couple of others that were sort of in that mm-hmm. realm of philosophy. And none of, them were, none of them are in my top books list. They're not even close. <laughs> Um, and and so I'm sort of thinking that might be a reason where I'm like, geez. maybe you've deviated a little bit from like yeah, the- it's it's like almost like oh, philosophy is getting like a bad taste in the mouth sort mm. of thing. Um, well, I, I do like our effective philosophy that you, yeah, I that did we like sort that. of mm-hmm. coined with. Um, if you have any thoughts on that, uh, otherwise I'll I'll uh, I'll add an extra point. Well, I was going to say yeah, the the effective philosophy is probably like the last time we talked about philosophy in general, but. Uh, if you're listening to this now, you can also catch the book review that I did of um, the little book of philosophy. Uh, uh, was it the li- the little the little book of alpaca philosophy by Jennifer McCartney? And a uh, little uh, hint for anyone who hasn't gone and checked that out, but I do appreciate if you go check out the full book review. Uh, I gave that a five out of ten, and five out of ten would normally be like I would say that that's like a right in the middle of the band wave. Like I'm not going to reread it again. It's a philosophy book. It was tiny, and what you'd expect. It's not like deep and meaningful. And it was just like... I expect like little, little fun quotes maybe. Yeah. Cute, cute little things, but maybe there's a... That sort of thing. Yeah. But in all, I kind of went... Even though I gave it a 5 out of 10, I went, you know what? If you were just getting into philosophy, or if it was like a young person, or you wanted something just a little bit of a pick-me-up, it's actually not a bad book to read. It wasn't a bad book because it had uh, original poems, uh, little, you know, facts about the alpacas, and Jennifer's also written like another similar book about like philosophy of like otters and philosophy of sloth so you know it's, okay, a, yeah. it's a bit of a play on like animals and gives you a little bit of facts but within it there's like the general philosophical philosophical like streams of thoughts i guess you might see on these more complex books but it's just written in a very like very casual very simple way so like i kind of went away being like well it was a simple book it was a very casual book so like i'm gonna reread it again and i'm not gonna be like oh this is an amazing thing that got said in here but it served in the ability of being like, oh, this is a, oh, I remember this. This is, this is the way I can understand this particular concept and the way that it maps it back to, you know, alpacas makes it fun. Like, I was like, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a fun concept to at least think about. And I, in my mind, I went, I think I prefer to read philosophy in that way. And maybe what Brendan's point of view is, maybe if we talk philosophy, it is that in that mere mortal type of way where we're talking a little bit around the generality of life, not the 
the very deep way that niche or someone else might be investigating philosophy because mm. yes it's good but how applicable is it to everyday people yeah maybe not as much for sure uh did it come up with anything about alpacas being badasses and kicking the living shit out of like protecting herds and stuff because i saw this recent video of a donkey mm. just absolutely no. going wild at a it was like a fox or a mountain lion it was it was something mm. that was way bigger like you'd think man a donkey versus this animal it's gonna the donkey get, would get down. messed up but this donkey was fearless just kicking the shit out of this uh this mm. uh predator and it was, I, like in the comments, it was saying, uh, donkeys and alpacas are actually really good uh, herd sort of protecting animals. So was there any of that philosophy? Uh, like, there wasn't any alpaca of... Alpaca don't give a shit. No, nah, there wasn't <laughs> any of that. There was a little bit of the alpaca kind of almost like blending in the background type of conversation or, because I think many, like right at the beginnings, there's a, like 90% or 80% of alpacas where like exterminated basically by foreigners or people traveling around and so they survive from that there's some conversation around that but no i didn't really talk about they were like getting up and bashing people in though <laughs> predominantly it was like oh look at them being really nice and really uh you know teddy like sort of style and nice hair and that was those was, was interesting but however one one point which was interesting and kind of leads into my point unless do you have a, a point around this I, I do want to get into some stuff yeah so. okay okay well let's yeah. talk about that first before i, I tell you this particular okay. point okay cool so uh with all of that being said about you know us deviating mm -hmm. away from philosophy and stuff i want to make a, an attempt uh but in our own style to get back onto that mm -hmm. so you know more everyday situations where a choice had to be made of whether it was the right one or not the one or maybe what i could have done better to improve the situation mm -hmm. so to kick off I, t I told a small lie recently Tall small lie yes okay. and uh i'll, I'll come and out no I knowingly like you knowingly it, so pull, in pull indirectly out. slipped out um okay. whilst i was in a uh, a social situation actually with brendan and mm -hmm. it was basically like I basically mentioned that we'd uh, we'd done some car swapping within my family. So, so my dad had got a new car. He passed an old car onto my brother. My brother passed an old car onto me. Yep. And then my car, which was went to the uh, it, It's it's still hanging around at the moment. Nothing's been done with it, but it it's it trade again. It's uh, it should have been going to <laughs> the scrap heap or to like a parts place a long a long time ago. Years ago. Uh, and and uh, you know he someone just asked a question like oh um so like you paid your brother for that or something like that and mm. i i was just like yeah 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 and mm. i said yes there, there wasn't actually any particular agreement um made um and i think what initially was going through my head was mm. uh I'd, I'd previously just been like probably like 10 minutes before that been talking mm. about how i hadn't particularly worked for getting close on six years now and in, in like a standard job mm -hmm. And uh, it, this is another thing I'd been thinking about, you know, in the months leading up to this situation, which was like, I want to make sure I, I don't come across in the wrong way, which is people know that, uh, m like, my dad and dad and mom have created a lot of wealth for themselves, but I don't want it to come across that, like, I'm leeching off of them, which, mm. is, which is not the case. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I have my own independent resources. Mm -hmm. But... It's very easy, I think, for people to perhaps get the impression like, ah, oh, current a trust fund kind or, or, mm. or some shit like that. Uh, and so the the sort of like small the small lie was basically like, oh yeah, I, I paid my brother for the car, yep. essentially, which it, it I hadn't. Now I'd basically said like, oh, here's my car, like do with it what you want. So there's there's yeah, some capital there was an in exchange there, and, of something, <laughs> and you know the probably the. It's not like the car I got, you know, it's got 160 Ks on it at least. Uh, it's only a couple of years younger than my old one. Mm. So, you know, probably if you had to like do evaluations on the cars, mine is probably like worth half of what his was. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it kind of like, it's kind of like, oh, yeah. Feels like there's some payment there. There, there would be a rough sort of payment mm. sort of thing going on. It'd be roughly equivalent. Um, but, but this happened, right? And so I was sort of like, was finishing, almost like finishing my sentence. And then mm. I was like, oh, I just lied. So mm. it probably took like 10 seconds from me saying the lie, uh, or at least misrepresenting the truth. Um, now let's call it what it was. It was a lie. Uh, me lying to me being like, oh, I just lied. Mm. Now I've got, a, 
a relatively strong stand against lying. Uh, if you read um, Sam Harris's book, I think it's just called Lying mm -hmm. or On Lying. Um, the, he, he presents pretty good arguments of why you should never lie. Mm -hmm. I'm most of the way there, um, most of the way there. And I was then just thinking like, okay, well, uh, I didn't do anything about it in that situation. But now upon reflection, I'm like, okay, what would have been an appropriate thing to do? Should I have called myself out almost immediately? Oh, like afterwards, like after the lie, what you yeah, should have done? Yeah, because I, look, I, I think that thing is going to happen. Like mm. I, controlling a, a lie like that, I think it'd be, it's, it's, it's pretty hard. I think it's pretty hard to, I, I can catch myself sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, those sorts of ones, I, th I think they're just going to, pop up and mm. it's like convenience sake i'm gonna say this thing you know it's, yeah it saves the extra conversation you don't have to clarify certain things it's like okay yeah um but then i that one was I, it sort of felt blatant in a way and i just went mm. okay like what what would have been a the appropriate thing to do afterwards the conversation had sort of almost already moved on mm. uh, by the, by the time it's like is it worth actually like it saying anything and things like that uh i don't know do you do you ever have situations like that and if you do, what do you do to remedy it? It's it like, should I, should I bring this up? You know, mm. to to that like group later. Yeah, because it, it wasn't even just a lie to an individual person. It was sort of to a group. Mm. So it's like, <laughs> do I address this one by one? Do I? Is this one of those things where it's like, uh, if the topic comes up again, I'm like, oh, yeah, uh, I I lied before as well. Like there, there was an exchange between me and my brother, but. Blah, 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 blah. I think of the. I think it, uh, I more go, uh, and maybe we'll we'll pull from effective philosophy, that if the lie, in itself, causes some action or some effect, which is either malintended or goes down the wrong path, even if it's beneficial to you, then there's something that I think you'd have to pull up at a separate time frame to say like, oh, actually no, that was a lie, and this is why, and you know, continue or pursue whatever it is, action event that's going on with that, that reality in mind. Like, if for some reason you saying that answer of, oh, you guys had paid, then eventually meant that someone in that group was like, oh, you you did a really great thing there. Here, have this cake. Or have <laughs> this, you know, ha okay. have this, like, toy plane. I'll or do something. just about anything for cake people. You so. know, <laughs> yeah, they're like, you know, have the sugar because you, you paid him. Like, that's a really nice thing to do. I think in that instance, that's where... In my mind, and I think, okay, you don't have to call out and be like, no, actually, no, I didn't. Like, I, I actually lied there uh, for whatever reason. And look, you can still give me it. Like, then continue with your action now knowing that. <laughs> give me the cake. <laughs> give me the cake anyways. <clears throat> but it, because it, what it makes me think, it's, you know, if someone asks you on the street or like a random person, they say, how are you? Or even at work, how are you? You know, is, your answer might actually be, actually terrible because this morning I crashed my car and then my partner didn't give me a call and then my dog wasn't eating, right? That might be like a genuine answer. So the answer I is... I did this the other day, actually. And so the answer might not be fine. Hmm. But you might just reply with, yeah, I'm fine. Now, is that a lie or you're not, not articulating the truth correctly? Maybe. But with certain individuals or like a, a lot of individuals, the that, that particular lie or omission of truth is... It's not affecting the other person. Like, they're going to go about with the day and not be affected by it, by that response. And so then you can go and take your own actions and events and do whatever, and that won't be affected by anything. Um, so I think in those instances, there is there is place I see where you could lie if it's not affecting and you don't have to, even if it spills out, and you don't have to in particular go and rectify that lie or that omission of truth. But when it does take an effect, even if it's positive or negative to somebody else, I think then there's some there's some action that you need to take to like rectify that so that you well at least if your feeling is you don't want to lie at all mm. then I think the philosophy should be that if it affects the stream of the way that life is then maybe you should try and rectify that and put it back rightly and then allow it to go on its merry way yeah because then you then you might be then you might look back on it at some point and go oh did that stem from that lie and then oh shit like is this built on a lie and all that sort of stuff yeah it's it's sort of one of those ones where it's uh, you know, is is the is the butterfly effect in in place here? I would this lie actually end up you know changing hmm. the course of human, human history? history. <laughs> but you know, put it a lot of uh, that's not egotistical at all. Thinking like my my small yeah. small lie is going to change human history. But you know, uh, the 
I, I think the argument could also be made, you know, you're, you'll never n be able to see like the full reaching consequences of what this actually has done. And in general, trying to distort reality, i.e. like, you know, we're in communist Russia and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's all right. The system is working, uh, you know, everyone, uh, each to their own, whatever the, the stupid motto is, uh, each to their ability. Yeah. I forget it. Mm. Uh, and that ends up in like just, you know, rampant lying throughout the system. And that sort of be, seemed to be like, okay, that's a good indication that it's going to fail because you're just ignoring all of this pain and suffering and mm. the, the harsh, truthful reality, which is, you know, people are starving sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, in a, in a, in a small way, it's like that, like in 1984. And I love that I can now quote 1984. <laughs> I've actually read it. But that, that whole idea that you can rewrite the past, right, by the sheer act of, you know, lots of people going and forcing the changing of words and, you know, what people think and all that, that in the act of lying, that small lie, say in a scenario of just like saying it's fine, right, you might three days from then on, you said you're fine, but you weren't because like, you lied or you admitted the truth. But you might recall, and someone else might recall, being like, oh, but three days ago you were fine. And you might be like, oh, yeah, I thought I was fine. And so you kind of have rewritten the past. Like, that's not actually what you thought. But you said it because that's just, it made it easy. And now looking back on it, that's like the objective truth. And you don't actually know what the actual truth was. So there's, there's a bit of, if you, do, I, I guess the view there would be, if you lie, there is a chance that you actually kind of rewrite the past to not what it actually was, but to something else that you want it to be. And so then you could cause yourself troubles, I guess, in the sense of, oh, I actually was thinking this, but I did that. And now did I actually think I was doing that or was it something else? And now you've disrupted maybe potentially what you really thought or what other people thought of you. So I think in instances like that, it's like, oh, okay, you probably want to rectify. If it's going to be that large, then okay, you want to rectify what you're sharing with people so that it's aligned to the truth and you're not altering the past, I guess, to what you actually, what it probably actually was. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, like, in, in terms of outcomes um, f for kind of what I've decided mm. for myself, uh, I think similar to what you're saying, like, if, if that particular topic comes up again, I would, would probably try and rectify it uh, and be mm. like, oh, yeah, by the way, I, I, like, I think I once said that, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I, I paid my brother for the car. That, that wasn't true. Uh, what we did was, like, I gave him my sort of my shitty car for him to do what he wants with it yeah I, yeah i sell it on so mm. that was sort of the payment um uh, and then you know it's also like we're family so mm. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily need to be like a payment of, an exchange yeah, yeah. but but uh, but and, and see this thing but some people might think that there needs to be and some people might not totally understand and be like oh yeah then it, it doesn't need to be but i think that's where you have to be the, uh, i guess Lying is a sort of way, but I guess being precise because you don't have to, you can just share the, precisely what happened and then they can determine whether that's like whatever it is. You know what? But it, you're not yeah, you know what's going to happen? It. I'm going to, like, if this ever happens, if it ever comes up again, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll spend like a minute or two explaining it and they'll just be like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, this is such a nothing to me. Why, why did you waste two minutes of my life? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, <laughs> it's and that, that's, exactly and that, what's and that's the other thing I think on broadly, like, with, with lying. And I think when it comes to like you know, how much, you know, you shouldn't lie, you should always tell the truth because you're going to, a lot of times like, yeah, people just don't give a shit what you're saying at yeah. a large extent. So like you might be saying, you know, oh, I've got a blue jumper, but you've actually got a red jumper at home. Like nobody cares. Nobody actually gives a shit <laughs> unless it's actually something that acts on them. So that's why I was thinking, you know, if it's a lie that nobody cares about, like if you say, oh, for you me immortal lights, if I said my bed sheet at home is blue and it's white, but I say it's blue, like it's not affecting anybody does that lie change anything about people maybe maybe not but that, that, that would be one of those things if it just like randomly came out and you said that do I really have to be like actually I, guy I'm oh, sorry it's not not blue it's actually white yeah. then was, yeah <laughs> right. it's, it's kind of classic overthinking Kyra in a way it's just um... I guess the, the way I've, I've tried to deal with it because see from my opposite side is the I always have the tendency normally to like jokingly lie in a bit of fun like I might overextend the truth because it's fun and I'll often do that with work, I'll do that with friends, I'll do it with family. Um, I know my dad does this as well, just like in a, in a joking way and will normally like take a particular idea and be like, ah, oh, do you know this happened because of whatever, insert X and it's a joke, yeah. but it's not really. I've noticed that as well. With <clears throat> so like I do that all the time and I'll, I would do it even more 
And one of the things I think I put down as part of uh, trying to rectify that, not that I have to change it all the time. However, the Jordan Peterson's view of, you know, just being precise with your words, sometimes, especially with work, if I was to say something, a little reminder of myself is be like, oh, I, I said this, but actually like, precisely what I mean is like, this is what happened or this is what, I, what it went. Um, so I guess I still get part of like the joke, but I rectify it and be like, no, actually, like this is exactly what happened to be a little bit more clear with it so but well there's uh you know i've got the opposite problem which is i'm i'm usually too serious it's just sort of uh i'll 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 have someone joking around like mm. that and it's just why are you saying that mm. you, know, you you just lied to me you you i, I was basing my reactions mm. off of that and you just lied to me you fuck mm. you know that, that <laughs> sort of that sort of level of uh intensity and it and in, until it's it, it's made blindingly obvious hmm. to me and then it then it's oh okay i, I can maybe play along now uh, but you know there's getting back to the sort of credulous thing like hmm. i just take people on face value as as a sort of given hmm. and it's not i'm not looking to the the sort of pessimistic side of being well not even pessimistic but even the underlying side which is oh people are capable of lying or, or joking around or saying things for a, a reason that's maybe unclear on the surface to me. Mm. Which, for me, the, the reason is usually, oh, they're trying to provide information. But no, mm. maybe they're trying to joke around. Yeah, like a, it's like the information house within is just... Maybe they're trying to hide a un, uncomfortable truth from their spouse or partner. Mm. You know, those sort of things. And those, typically, I, I struggle uh, to... to to click on to that concept, mm. that concept really quickly, uh, which which gets me in trouble. <laughs> Good. Anyway, um, yeah, go on to your topic, man. What were you talking okay, about? So, so there's a little bit, uh, I guess, another type of philosophy. I guess we talk about it. So it's all kind of structure around long-term games. But one of the things I found in the book, uh, the, uh, the little book of back of philosophy, was on page like eighty something, because it was written in 2020. She actually talks about Bitcoin. And, but not as then she doesn't call it Bitcoin, but she calls it uh, internet money or like internet digital money. So you know it's not very well articulated as to what it is. But the the whole premises of that that we're trying to make on the book was, you know, if people out there are making like internet money with coins and whatnot, then surely you can you know find value in X Y Z something else. Jennifer McCartney confirmed Bitcoin Maxi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Must be. I reckon in all her other books, she's probably talking about Bitcoin too. On the front of the book, her alpaca just has the laser eyes. Just laser eyes. (laughs) But, so that got me, that particular bit was like, oh, it was just interesting. It was interesting to see just like a random quote of internet money of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in general in there. And it also just struck me again of the alienness and the ability that people describe cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or any sort of digital currency in general in just such a simplistic basic way which is good for for understanding but it kind of affirmed my philosophy or the mindset of okay it's still super early as we speak right now we're on the 18th 19th of june and for all intents and purposes i think cryptocurrencies have come off about i think 69 70 percent off bitcoin's top like 80 something for everything else right like across the board so it's, a, it's, in a, it's in a down period and so it's economy in general so it's stock market la 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 all this sort of stuff um, but it assured me that I went okay my philosophy of it's long term games with long term people that's that's always like a, a good thing that I, I have in mind and one of the things I can't got from Vcon I think I shared already in the podcast was oh I, I can see it's like three or four years away that's what, my, what the feeling of, in terms of you want to be working in the space and it'd be really entrenched and everyone's uh, playing around and it's like a little bit more stable I see it as like three, four years. And so with the market in general just coming da- down, whether it's both economic or just cryptocurrency in general, I'm like, uh, it's like, it's still a little bit sad, I guess, to see like a lot of the financial stuff that you might have in there just to dwindle down. But in seeing it in that book, my philosophy went, oh, you know what? This is, there's a, a really big, I would say, enlightening point for me to go, okay, I want to do another two years worth of learning specifically in this, while well, I call it just broadly Web3 space. So whether, and I like, I split that out into, you know, that could be NFTs, that could be DAOs, that could be blockchain in general, it could be tokenomics, it could be DeFi. There's a lot of things that come along with it. And I might focus in on one space, I might just do the broad thing, I'm not sure. But I think my philosophy on time-wise 
of you know I think Tony Robbins and a few other people say there it's like you know you can you'll be you'll be underwhelmed with what you can do you know in the short term but you'll be overwhelmed with what you do in the long term and I'm I'm starting to care even less and less on okay what am I doing with my money or with my learnings you know in a month or two uh, as long as I'm going in the right path and, and putting the right sort of steps in place and I'm doing things to put me in a good position, that's fine. Um, but really, I'm, it's really starting to move me out to like three, four, five year time frames. I'm like, I'm like okay, I'm, I'm happy that in four years time, I'm at, at this level with this because that's, that's what I'm expecting it with. And I've started to have that thought in my mind now for a while of like the podcast, where I think when we started it, there might've been a thought in my mind, like in two years, I can see it being this size or being this grow, these listeners or inside whatever. Where now... I'm totally comfortable in thinking about it in really long terms of, oh yeah, I can see with that, say with podcasting 2.0 and value for value and that'll come into play in seven years time. And so in seven years time, we'll be in a really good position and have honed in a lot of things and I get to play around with a lot of things in the meantime. So it's like, oh, okay, that's starting to shift me to a even more long-term thinking, which I haven't normally been in the past. I think I've been more short-term. Okay. Think back to me wanting to do like day, day trading and the like. And so that's, that's obviously very, very short term <laughs> yeah. things. And one, I wasn't successful too. I just got really stressed <laughs> from it. So it's like, okay, I don't, I don't want to play in that space really, not at all. And I'm just enjoying more the long term space. And one thing I heard from a guy called Ian Rogers. So Ian Rogers was on Ledger, oh, sorry, on Proof with Kevin Rose. And he is the chief experience officer at Ledger. And he previously was a CEO with Beats Music. So he's a guy who was there when they moved Beats Music, to, sold it to Apple. So he's like been involved in the music industry for a long time, which is interesting because we were just talking about music in NFTs um, and in crypto just in general. So a lot of recently. people interested in that. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's going to be one big play, right? Like a big, big play that'll come probably at the earliest in, when you're talking about blockchain and it's in the technology. Like technology, not like the, the money aspect of it. But one of the things he was sharing in this particular podcast was he used to work um, for the Bernard family, I think it's called, the French family who own Louis Vuitton, second, Supreme. Second wealthiest family in the world. Yeah. Uh, like, their, yeah, in terms of their conglomeration of wealth, I think uh, I think underneath one guy, underneath the main dude, mm. is... Like a whole host of the family who yeah, own, like, it's everything. it's like $162 billion or some Tough ridiculous hit. amount. And so they own all of those, like, really ritzy, rich uh, brands. Louis Vuitton... Um, Dior, Dior, Chanel, whatever, like heaps, right? That's like L and blah blah blah. Anyways, the one of the, the points that he was saying that um, I think it was Louis Vuitton in particular. He said Louis Vuitton has a as an interesting uh, pledge that they make all of their employees do. Who knows if it's still the case, but he was saying at least at the time that's what it was. Um, they have a hundred year pledge, so whatever they're doing for the products or what they're building for customers, it's like oh we're not designing or building for five years, ten years. So like oh no, th- th- their idea is a hundred years. So they've got like hundred year plans for products or for ideas. Now oh, I was like, sounds like Scientology. I was like, man, selling your soul for eight billion years or whatever, <laughs> something like that. But I guess the the takeaway for me was like, oh, that's a that's a that's an interesting different way to think about it from like a really a really long term. If you like, you want to separate yourself from the way other people are operating in life because often it's in maybe in the often it's short term, some in the medium term. But there is something to be said around you know you might say like, oh, we're going to be the the best, uh, you know general philosophizing podcasts uh, in, over the next 20 years because I was like okay who's playing in that space there might not be many like in that space mm. it's like okay that's that's a long time that's a very different playing field okay you can really differentiate yourself, yourself in that sort of space maybe you know it could be the best you know uh, over the next 50 years I want to be the best hot dog on average producer or seller in New York streets like you know, you know it might be like that sort of mindset now that's all the way to the other extreme I guess of, of long term playing but my philosophy in general, I think I'm starting to st- stumble along into longer term plays as opposed to shorter term plays. Yeah, so, cool. Um, and I, and I, I think happily, it isn't because you know the market goes down and all of a sudden you're a long term holder by default. <laughs> <you know? laughs> it's like, yeah. oh yeah, now you, know, you see it all the time with me. People are like, well, I got to become a long term yeah, holder yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I'm um, it's forever. not because of that. It's not because of that. Well. Um, but I think now there's yeah there's a certain level of yeah I'm I'm comfortable to be thinking years in years in terms of some efforts and and not having to be so like okay it's got to happen right now or not even worrying about the there's like the mentality of like okay what can you do in 10 that takes you 10 years and one year and thinking about how you make it happen in one year there's good aspects of that because it changes your mind so like okay well i have to do this and you have to do that but then still being comfortable that it takes 10 years to do the journey 
to do the stuff. Mm. So anyway, in it's, general, I think the philosophy has just shifted towards that. This sort of stuff is real hard, man. I um, I, I tend to go to my my sort of variation mood mood swing thing, which is you won't be able to think that way forever. It's like mm. don't don't rest all your hopes. Don't make it your sort of like default thing that I'm always going to be a long term thinker. Uh, much like it's. I, th- I think it's silly to 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 be like this is the only thing and just rest everything on 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 something being unchanging because mm. things always change. It's a fucking annoying part of just reality, but mm. they always do. Uh, and so, like for example, I was thinking recently, you know, what would be if if I was to um, you know let, let's apply it to a current problem I have, which is. Uh, I, I would like to find a like a, a girlfriend, wife, partner, that sort of thing. Um, is if I'm going to think on the like long term, is the long term thinking the best way to to really uh, create the action, the mindset necessary to find one, for mm-hmm. example? And you could say, yeah, sure. You know, you uh, if you're thinking of like the the woman you'd want to be with in ten years time, uh, how do you sort of imagine that? What sort of characteristics? Uh, and then it's like, oh, okay, I need to look for these characteristics in, mm-hmm. in, in her. Uh, what, what sort of things are, you know, immediate red flags so you don't waste time on? You know, perfect, that sort of thing. But when I'm out here on the street and, you know, I see a pretty girl who could potentially fulfill this role, mm-hmm. like, you know, she at least meets the, the minimum attractiveness level. Uh, and then it's like, all right, now I need to do the work to find out if she has those things. Long-term thinking doesn't help because... You know what? What I feel in the moment is like, oh, it's a pretty girl. Like I get nervous. You know, mm-hmm. like the heart starts to beat. You, you, you think of all the reasons of why talking to her would be a bad idea, and you know, oh, I'm going to inconvenience her. Oh, I'm going to, um, you know, she's going to reject me. That you know, just the the more evolutionary thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you know, I'll get kept, kicked out of the group, sort of, sort of thinking. But and that's when a real short term, almost zen like thing of I'm never going to get this opportunity again you know she walks past me mm. this is a city of 1.3 million people or something like that you know what are the chances I'm ever going to see her again it, it's going to be pretty small man um, and especially in a situation where I could potentially just talk to her and that's where it's like you know what the sort of YOLO carpe diem um, I, I'm never going to get this chance again fuck it i'm just going to do it you know because you only live life once mm. the the and that would be the more appropriate long the the more appropriate mental state to be in not not the long term <laughs> yeah like actually looking no, at her and evaluating and being like yeah, oh no. yeah yeah well that's actually not that's a good point because now it just readjusted i guess what i was thinking about where it was i think you do like so it's not to say that long term games are not a, a good thing but the the answer is is not that everything's long term or that it's either long term or short term. That's not the answer. The answer is that actually you need to have all tracks of mind, all all sort of like holding holding them in your state all at once. So you have to have the short term mentality of certain things because because another example for me like you have to have short term acuity I guess when it comes to perhaps your sleep patterns or your way that you train right. Like if you want to get a, a good handstand or a one-handed handstand or you want to be doing a particular lift like an Olympic lift then you need really short-term goals as well as long-term goals like you need to have a really when I say short-term goals I guess more of like a short-term acuity to be like oh I'm in this moment doing this thing right now and I need yeah. to be handling what, this what am I doing today what am I doing tomorrow and what, what did I, I do like yesterday these seconds? Like, what am I doing yeah. these couple of seconds and, and I guess in that sense yes it's a philosophy of you have to have yes that ability of very short range uh, action like the action is absolutely needed so with, with a female or with the opposite sex or whoever you might enjoy you know there's, there's going to be aspects where you go, you have to pull the trigger and be like okay I need to go do this right now and like forgo the fact that long term I, lo- I want this particular thing and maybe she doesn't have that or you know we're not in the right area it's like no you have to pull the trigger and do this right now because that's that's what's in front of you like you have to just do it in this particular moment with you can also kind of hold that in the same state on the other hand of there's also a long-term plan that, oh, 
when you have this conversation it's in the short term space you, you will be looking towards if she says like oh by the way I'm a constant drug addict and I like to punch my mom in the head you know you might be like okay this is not fitting my long term goals of the type of individual on my wife definitely fitting my short term right but, 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 might be fitting the short term. but as long as you can be conscious of it as a mere mortal to know what you're making the decisions of then that's fantastic I think my point of view there was like oh I now know the things that I want to be playing long term games in there are things I don't want to be playing long-term games in, for sure. Like, let's say, like last night, I went out for a bit of a drink and a bit of a dance. Now, uh, does that fall under my long-term game strategy of, you know, going out? Hell no. Like, that's not, like, it doesn't fall into anything or any conversation around that. But you've got to have the ability to have the short-term fun, the short-term enjoyment, the short-term that comes with, okay, I've got to do this and I want to meet up with this person or I'm going to do that. Does that. I think you have to have the flexibility and the ability to hold both states in, in hand. I guess where it gets tricky... So would be knowing when to apply it well where, where, which one wins out you know where, what's the right answer and I think the I think the answer is joke like you know surprise there isn't really an answer that anybody <laughs> yeah, yeah. can give you yeah, but I think go. that 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 duality will fall for you as an individual which will form a lot of what life choices you make because say in this instance of meeting a girl let's say she's incredibly attractive First interaction, awesome. Maybe she compliments you on your hand stands. Fucking better. But straight away, in a couple of, you know, is the short term become, okay, I want to sleep with her very quickly or I want to take her out on a date and give her a kiss or, you know, there's that outcome or there's the outcome of, I want to take her out for a date and get to know her more and so start going towards a long-term play already. Mm. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do both. <laughs> like those, those two do exist. They coexist. But often in the case that you have to kind of pick one or the other. You, you kind of go fluctuate down the one or the other. And I think that's the, that's the, the joy, the frustration, uh, and the, the beauty of life is that in a way you do have the control to kind of choose within your hedonistic short-term self and maybe a, a different type of joy in the long-term self. And you just have to kind of figure out, okay, when do you make that call? When are you, when are you ready to try to play the long-term game? When is it that you have to play a short-term game? And holding them in, in balance. Yeah, this is why I look like uh, our our version of effective philosophy, which is uh, I had the actual exact opposite of what you just said mm. uh, with your example last night, which was uh, I went out as well mm. um, with with some friends, uh, and we were going to meet up with you, and it was getting to sort of like ten thirty at night, and I I pulled the trigger and I went, you know, long term thinking, this isn't going to help me. Mm. Like me being out tonight, I'm not I'm, I'm not. I don't have the most fun in any case going out to to places and, and dancing and drinking. It's not particularly my vibe. Uh, I do enjoy hanging out with friends, but what would I rather do? Would I rather get an extra two and a half hours of fun with friends this evening? Mm-hmm. Or, or I would call it maybe mediocre fun. Mm-hmm. Or would I rather get that extra two and a half hours sleep and not waste three hours the next day, having a shitty workout. Hmm. Uh, and so I made the decision, I'm going to call it a pretty early night. So I was home by 11, 15 or something like yep. that. Uh, and so, yeah, that's one of those ones where it's like, you know, which it was the exact hmm. same situation in a way. You chose the going out one. I chose the going home one. And we chose them both for different reasons. Mm-hmm. And, and then who was right? Well, obviously I'm right because I'm going to have a fucking <laughs> awesome workout. But <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's fun thing about a effective philosophy you can both both can be right and it can be the well, almost think, identical but, situation and I, th- I think for a reminder for people who um didn't listen to that effective philosophy podcast as well the the main point of was saying why is it effective philosophy is because we have to act on it like it's the action i think we're saying that philosophy in general and perhaps that might be the the feeling you get when you read those really deep hearty thick philosophy books is that to put it into practice yeah, or some, the practice that comes behind it or the action is just loaded with difficulty or loaded with meaning it's like what are you actually trying to say here like i don't know how does this apply to an actual human not you know a phd level person trying to decipher some script here to what it actually intends it's like no i think the effective philosophy is that it's going to be well the idea as complex as it may be also has to be an, an active one like one that you can actually take an action on so the philosophy plays out in reality or else well you know and i think maybe that's why even though i gave it a five out of ten I liked, I kind of did like that little book of uh, uh, Alpaca Philosophy, Philosophy of Alpacas, because 
a lot of it was just like active philosophy. It was all like, okay, do you like doing this with, with people? And, you know, if you want to feel better about yourself, just forget about this and remember this and do that. And it could have done obviously a lot better, but it, it aligned it more to like what we've been talking about effective philosophy and going like, oh yeah, okay, I can see that. I can see that. As opposed to maybe reading... Man, I'm three quarters of the way through Reasons and Persons. Right up. I have, you know, investigated deep as much as I can comprehend of the intricacies of what it means to be a person, of mm-hmm. your... the What is personal identity over sort of temporal space across time, across, you know the physical manifestations that are our bodies and, and things like this. Uh, I've, he's delved into the, the optimal sort of mindset, the goal, the end goal of what you should, uh, what one could or should do for the most optimal life, that yep. sort of thing. And I've yet to come across a single sentence of him saying, uh, and this is how my... This is how it's applied. Uh, yeah, this is how it's changed how I behave oh. in the world. There was one sort of thing he said, which I kind of understood, which was similar to my thoughts on free will, which is if you really push me to the point, I say, no, I don't, I don't really see how free will can exist. Uh, uh, but I behave in the short term, and this allows me to be a bit more compassionate for some things, like if someone's being a dickhead to me, yeah, if I'm angry with myself, if there's negative emotions, I can sort of be like, that had to happen. Mm. There was no, there was no way I could have done anything to make that better. But mm. on the short term sort of side, yes, I, I'm going to treat you. You just uh, did something awesome. You you donated to charity. You chose to do that. That was your free will. And, and then I can sort of reap both sides, like down, cap the downside and mm. and push up the positive. And he said sort of something similar for him, which was, uh, it was related to, uh, what did he call it? It's um, reductionism, I think. And he sort of, there's sort of a whole bunch of outcomes where he, he would he would sort of, yeah, I'll, I'll have to talk about it in the book review, but a similar sort of thing, yeah. which is, it, it looks like it's kind of absurd on the surface, mm-hmm. like my decision, my sort of thinking that free will doesn't exist. And then you're like, oh, but that means you think this and you think that. Yeah, and, like it's like the breaking and, down of it. And, but he's like, no, me thinking this allows me to to not worry too much about my own life, about my own death. I think it was mostly related to his death and, you know, the existential, like, worry, I guess, mm-hmm. that, that a lot of people can have. And he says, no, this way of thinking allows me to 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 not have that bur- not carry that burden oh, okay. and so well, that then I go really, yeah. okay I can understand that yeah but you know that's w- sort of one thing I've taken out of a uh, you know the four hundred pages I've read book. so far which are very dense and look and to confusing. people who who might think where is what is the applicability of that sort of philosophy right why why is it worth having those conversations it is useful in some instances of the way that we interact let's take for instance law take for instance Probably in 25 yeah, well, even years. Technology Re- decisions. Yeah, exactly. We listen like to that. this in 25 years' time, me and more lights, and I bet your bottom dollar there's going to be a deep conversation about if you laser send your you know, entity, your thoughts and dreams and hopes and a little chip or a little light beam to Mars, and if that is then transported that into another body, you know, are you the human? Is that the human? Oh, here's an example. You know? uh, you, you've got a prosthetic limb or something like that, and you'd replace it for a, a sort of like they replicate your left arm somehow, create a, a weird fleshy thing, put it on your right arm or whatnot, and and then you've got like this sort of pres- prosthetic limb that is maybe yours, sort of atom by atom mm. of, uh, of a replica, and you're on a job or something, you have a seizure, and you press a button that kills someone. Like mm. who's, at, who's at fault? Like and, and you could be like, my arm did things that, it doesn't normally do like it doesn't mm. behave like that okay but is it yours like it's your body so who's at fault is it is it you or mm. is it the the arm at fault you know that that's sort of yeah, so there, a little a, bit of a ridiculous situation but, but yeah. there are there are aspects to where i can see that sort of philosophy the conversation of what is humanity what is a person what is a person through time you know what is a person through time through you know in the digital realm in the physical realm in the Another realm, you know, whatever, whatever way you want to converse it, like, there are aspects that I think does hold validity to 
talking and thinking about it or otherwise it wouldn't exist it just wouldn't be people just talking shit for shit's purpose i mean maybe but i feel like there's enough people doing it that there's not it just when it comes to a more abstract way that we interact with it in everyday life it's you can do you can use much simpler terminology and much simpler strategies and that's why i think I like, that's why i think i like effective philosophy in the way that it's okay it's, it's applicable it's, it's actually applicable in a, in a day-to-day way both in the conversations of short-term long-term plays etc it's there you're like oh i can see that being played out as opposed to maybe these mu- much more uh rough around the edges to dissect down into like your everyday life and how it actually comes to play out how do you like you know that that particular example of some of me more lights like well i don't have a prosthetic arm so well <laughs> yeah. okay it doesn't apply so it's like okay that's it's not gonna be everybody yeah well there's a I'll, I'll talk in the future about um the my thoughts on on creating hypotheticals which are conform to reality as well because that's another thing i've sort of taken from this book there's a lot of hypotheticals which are like man this is pretty far out there you know i'm not sure how help- helpful this is but that's a that's a whole different conversation yeah i have a i have a similar similar thoughts and uh i don't know i don't know i don't know really where to quantify it in my mind around things like string theory quantum theory quantum computers because there's a lot of aspects where it's, it is being put to use you know some things are being measured like you you can measure um you know gravitational waves through space but that concept or some of the concepts or the ideas behind it are so, so abstract to how you actually see reality and interact with reality that it's like, well, like, I don't know, how am I even conceptualizing this? Not even, it's not even that, it's not in your everyday life. It just, you don't, it's not in your life at all, at all. And it's like, well, yeah. it's in another dimension or it's in the Taurus or all this sort of di- different yeah. way of conversing. It's like, man, how do, is it even useful to know? Like, yeah. Is it even useful to know for me? Maybe it's useful for other purposes, but is it useful really to know? Uh, I'm, I don't know. That's, I mean, yeah. I'm not sure. There's, a, there's arguments for for and against that. I'll ask you. Sure. I'll, ask, I'll ask me more. I'll leave, I'll leave it with this. Uh, is it useful to know uh, really abstract thoughts, ideas like really abstract philosophical um, train of thoughts, or you know, uh, Hawking's radiation, you know, things like that? Is, is that worth knowing really as a mere mortal? Yes or no? Yeah, for I'd sure. Be, be, and so the, the way to do that, if you have followed us this far, you're, you're into effective philosophy. You like the mm-hmm. idea of philosophy that you can put into practice. And you also know that we're a value for value podcast. So how can you put the philosophy of value for value into practice? Pretty easy. You send us a booster gram. Do it. So action. By action. That is, uh, yeah, by action. So what we request is uh, both for your sake and for our sake that you go to newpodcastapps.com or nudepodcastapps.com if you're feeling a little bit risque and want to want to do it with uh without your clothes on and uh choose one of the ones from there so there's seven at the moment which uh you can uh, provide value back and in most of them there's chapter images as well and this is where i'm saying if you're listening on just a spotify you're, you're not getting the best of the mere mortals because i'm chucking chapter images up which are pretty cool they're kind of funny they're kind of lame they're kind of memey mm-hmm. there's a bit of everything in there and kind of informational sometimes as well and so if you go on there, you get a better experience and then you also have the ability to send us a, a payment of Satoshis. So this is a, a portion of a Bitcoin through the Lightning Network and you can answer Juan's request mm-hmm. that, he, uh, that he's put out or, up for you there. Or make any comments that you well, want yeah, along the line. General comments. We're, we're always looking for feedback of any sort. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we just request if you've enjoyed uh, this podcast for the 50 minutes roughly that it's been going on, you provide us 50 minutes worth of value back and you get to decide how much that is. It could be a little bit. It could be a lot of bit. We hope it's a lot of bit. Um, But yeah, you're the one who gets to decide that. So uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, until the next time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Be more like that's it. One out. Karen out.